Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Thank you, as always, for stopping by. I'm always grateful. Um, I still can't get that uh, sentence out of my mind uh, that President Mahama uh, used. It might speak, leave when the applause is the loudest, he said. Um, macro thoughts, oil play reborn as Trump trade shows rubles swept up in politics. Uh, it, there's an interesting ruble chart I expect it to hold around these levels firm a little bit. I'm, I'm not bullish about the oil price for now. And I think we've probably seen uh, quite, a, quite a lot of the ruble gains for the year. Um, on that note, my piece in the 5th of December was about Putin's parabolic rebound, and you can see that in the ruble that I just showed you. And then I like this photograph, Rooftops of St. Petersburg, Russia, by Andrei Mikhailov. German two-year yields at a new low of minus 0.85%, and that's a, a, a function of people getting nervous about the chances of Le Pen and uh, basically the spread between Germany and France has blown out. It was a most excellent day yesterday that I was hosted by His Excellency Johan Borgstam and uh, there was a collection of all the Swedish ambassadors in sub-Saharan Africa and at the Africa department from Sweden um, and uh, I spoke for about eight minutes about my view of the economy and of Africa right now. And then in the evening, there was a great reception at uh, Johan's house, and I'd like to thank His Excellency for the invitation to speak. Um, Johan produced some top quality Gronstedt's cognac last night, and I reminded Johan of what Richard Kapuczynski had to say of cognac. There is a lot of warmth in an old cognac, a lot of sun, it will go to one's head calmly, without hurry. The little one was very cross this morning and it took me 15 minutes out of my 20 minute drive to drop her off at the bus stop to persuade her to come and sit in the front, talk to me and let me hold her hand. And we spoke about our visit to the Darebi National Park and how she was the best spotter of wild animals. I like to think by the time she got on a bus, we were on the best of terms. I am reading The General in His Labyrinth. It's a novel by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, which I hadn't read before. And it's about um, Bolivar, who, who freed that entire uh, South American uh, subcontinent. And um, he's now being shuffled off into retirement and his thoughts are coming back to him as he's stopping in these various villages and cities and towns. Um, but he could not renounce his infinite capacity for illusion at the very moment he needed it most. He saw fireflies where there were none. Jose Palacios, his oldest servant, found him floating naked with his eyes open in the purifying waters of his bath and thought he had drowned. Political reflection, Zimbabwe's Mugabe says he is the people's choice for the 2018 election. Marine Le Pen advances in French polls as security concerns sway voters. Goes back to my article about Putin's parabolic rebound, and I said then, at this moment, President Putin has fortress Europe surrounded. So much has happened in 2016, from the Brexit vote to President-elect Trump, and it certainly feels like we have entered a new normal. One common theme is a parabolic Putin rebound at this moment. President Putin has fortress Europe surrounded the intellectual father of the new zeitgeist that propelled Brexit, Le Pen, the Five Star Movement in Italy, Gert Wilders in the Netherlands, is Vladimir Putin. Le Pen narrows the gap in the French elections. The French-German tenure spread blew out to 85 basis points, which is the widest since 2012. Federica Mogherini is seen here welcoming the US Vice President Pence to Brussels. Pence took a different tack to his boss, the President. 
uh, as did Jim Mattis, the defense, U.S. Defense Secretary, who said, we're not in Iraq to seize anybody's oil. Sea ice is, a, is at a record low in the Arctic and Antarctic, as climate central. My piece over the weekend was about politics, geopolitics, and its intersection with economics, and I was saying geopolitics is set to whipsaw economies. White House leaked Trump tape, you are the special people. We're doing a lot of interviews tomorrow, generals, dictators, we have everything Trump told the crowd, according to an audio tape of his close to the press remarks obtained by Politico from a source in the room. You may want to come round, it'll be fun, we're really working tomorrow, we have meetings every 15-20 minutes with different people that will form our government. We're going to be interviewing everybody, Treasury, we're going to be interviewing Secretary of State, he continued, we have everybody coming in. If you want to come around, it's going to be unbelievable, so you might want to come along. Fareed Zakaria said, we are witnessing a rocking horse presidency. Um, imploring viewers to not confuse motion with progress and arguing that Trump has hardly done anything. The first few weeks of the Trump administration had been an illustration of that line from the writer Alfred Montalper. Do not confuse motion and progress. A rocking horse keeps moving but does not make any progress, Zakaria said. We are witnessing a rocking horse presidency, he added. Is the Trump-Russia scandal really Watergate 2.0, asks Vanity Fair. Why did he resign? The official reason is that he lied to Mike Pence about the content of his conversation with Russian officials. But people suspect there's an unofficial reason, too. After all, would Flynn discuss sanctions with the Russians if Trump hadn't authorized it? Also, it seems that intelligence sources had already shared with Trump what they knew about Flynn weeks ago. So perhaps Trump knew more than he let on, leading to questions of what he knew and when. Let's move on to the currency markets. Euro dollars below 106 at 105.87. Dollar index 101.19. Japanese yen 113.55. Swiss franc 10057, the pound 124.54, the Aussie 0 0.7666, India rupee below 67 at 69.98, South Korean won 1146.58, the Brazilian real 3.087, the Egyptian pound, and I'll come to that stunning rebound that we've seen lately, is at 1580, and the South African rand 13.0822. The pound, let me put up a chart versus the dollar. Uh, last trading at uh, 124.54, I think you'd buy it on dips. Dollar index 101.19, that's rebounded strongly off that key level I've previously spoken about, 99.50. And a euro dollar chart here as well, 105.86. And uh, recent softness is all correlated to Gert Wilders and to uh, Le Pen. Commodity markets, gold, take a look at this, gold at 1234, it's been very strong out of the blocks in 2017. Crude oil is just around the $54 level, as I told you before, I don't see it again above 60. We've been in quite a narrow band for quite a while, you can see from the chart. Sub-Saharan Africa, Irin, uh, has an interesting piece, a rough guide to foreign military bases in Africa. The twin hotspots are the Sahel and the Horn of Africa. It's where Europe touches Africa and where Africa touches the Middle East, explained the Africa Director for the International Crisis Group. The Sahel controls the migration route that conveys young men and women across the Mediterranean. It's also a zone of instability where Al-Qaeda, so-called Islamic State, and Boko Haram operate. It's where state administration and Basic services are absent, encouraging that flow. From bases across the region, U.S. drones and French soldiers have joined African armies to push the militants 
into the remote hinter hinterlands. But blasting jihadists from the sky does not win the hearts and minds argument. The challenge is, despite the rise of new security structures in the last few years, they haven't done much to change the political dynamic on the ground. Those alliances also give leaders like Idris Debi in Chad and Ismail Omar Gule in Djibouti some regime security and a pass on their dodgy human rights record. And clearly we're going to move more in that direction under President Trump. Gule has milked it. Djibouti lies on the Bab el Mandeb Strait, a gateway to the Suez Canal, one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. And it's also a waypoint between Africa, India, and the Middle East makes a lot of money from hosting seven armies, America, China, Italy, France, Germany, Japan, Spain, and soon Saudi Arabia. The lease on the only permanent U.S. military base in Africa, Camp Lemonnier, is $63 million a year. China, building its own facility at the other end of the Gulf of Tanjura, gets a bargain at $20 million. Only Iran seems to have been fused a birth in Djibouti. China, they're in Djibouti building its first overseas military base. France is in Chad, um, headquarters of the anti-insurgent Operation Bakane. 3,500 French troops operating in Burkina Faso, Chad, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, Côte d'Ivoire, the facility at Port Boué, a suburb of Abidjan. Djibouti, a long-standing French military presence, now about 1,700 personnel. Gabon, a key base that has contributed troops to France's interventions in the CAR. Germany is in Niger, it's an air transport base in Niamey International Airport to support Germany's growing troop contribution to the UN mission in Mali. India is in Madagascar. India's first foreign listing post was set up in northern Madagascar in 2007. The Seychelles has allocated land on Assumption Island for India to build its first naval base in the Indian Ocean region. Japan is in Djibouti since 2011. Saudi Arabia, Djibouti as well. Um, Riyadh is now f has fallen out with Djibouti, is finalizing an agreement to build a new base um, and then it was interesting at that Swedish uh, off-site I was at. A lot of people expected the Somali president to make his first international visit to Saudi Arabia. Turkey is in Somalia. Ankara's first military base in Africa is a training facility for Somali troops. UAE, Eritrea in 2015. Somalia, UAE trains and equips Somalia's counter-terrorism unit. Somaliland, the UAE has a 30-year lease on a naval and air base at the port of Berbera. The United Kingdom, here in Kenya, permanent training support unit based mainly in Nanuki. The US is in Burkina Faso, a cooperative security lo location in Ouagadougou, Cameroon, Garua Airport in northern Cameroon is also a drone base targeting Boko Haram. Chad Predator and Reaper drones are based in the capital, Najemana. Djibouti, Camp Lemonnier, 200 hectare expeditionary base housing 3,200 US soldiers. Ethiopia, a small drone facility at Aba Minch. Kenya, Camp Simba in Manda Bay is a base for naval personnel and green berets. Niger, an initial base in Niamey, has been overtaken by Agadez. Somalia, US commandos are operating from compounds in Kismayu and Baladogal. Seychelles, drone operations from a base on the island of Victoria. Uganda, PC-12 surveillance aircraft fly from Entebbe. It's part of the US Special Forces mission helping the Ugandan army hunt for Joseph Kony. The clear story is that I think under Trump we're going to see a much more uh, focused counter-terrorism effort. And it's going to be worthwhile keeping an eye on those assets that people have on the ground. Angola prepares for life after Dos Santos, this is Chatham House, um, saying this will bring an end to a presidency that began in 1979 when Jimmy Carter was in the White House.
The transition from Dos Santos' rule is the most significant political event in Angola since its independence from Portugal in 1974 and comes at a time of deep, deep economic and social crisis in the oil-rich country. Waiting for Godot in Zimbabwe, how much more must citizens suffer? And I wrote about this July last year when I said countries like Zimbabwe feel like they are right at the edge, an edge that Hunter S. Thompson described. There is no honest way to explain it because the only people who really know where it is are the ones who have gone over. As Eritrea plays Iran off, Saudi Arabia both want to be best friends with the Afroweke regime. Ethiopia frets its losing diplomatic influence on the horn. There are major geopolitical shifts happening in that area. South Africa's Pravin Gordon says he is not indispensable. As he prepares to present the annual budget following almost a year of speculation that he might lose his job. We are just humble civil servants, Gordon said in an interview. Gordon will give his first full year budget speech on Wednesday in Cape Town. My conclusions are, oh dear, oh dear. Um, and I wrote about this over the weekend when I said rumours are swirling that the South African president is going to try and prize Prabhin Gordon out of his seat at the Treasury. The RAND has been on a tear in 2017 and has rallied about plus 5.5% as investors factored in a tapering of Zuma's carte blanche. Now the question is, will President Zuma go quietly or are things about to get messy with rumours swirling that he is going to try and prize Private Gordon out of his seat at the Treasury? The South African RAND needs close watching and again we see this political and economic intersection in play. South African oil shares up 3.76% this year. Dollar versus Rand, last trading 13.09. I prefer to trade the Rand near term from the short side. Egyptian pound versus the dollar. Look at this. Incredible snapback by the Egyptian pound. The biggest strengthening of an emerging market currency over a two week period in five years. That's according to Charles Robertson. No access to Mr. President for the Guardian at London's Abuja House. Um, and furthermore, there were developments in the FX market. Nigeria is now hit a fresh low of 520 on the black market on Monday and then slipped even further as low as 550, according to the Financial Times. Currency will be made available at 20% above the official rate in the President's absence, edging closer to full devaluation by making dollars available to private individuals at 20% above the official rate. For a long time I've been saying the fundamental paradox in the heart of President Buhari's government remains the Naira. Investors are sidelined, waiting for President Buhari's moment of epiphany. One senses some folks are watching. This is policymakers, governments, a Hail Mary pass, the price of crude oil. And if that pass does not come off, their problems are said to be compounded. The Nigerian war shares down 6.05% this year. The Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index is up 7.15% this year. Famine has been declared in parts of South Sudan. This is the FAO. Famine declared in parts of South Sudan. Man-made, not climactic, says the World Food Programme. If you haven't had a chance to see John Dramani Mahama's mind speak, we have a bunch of links on which Randolph's do take a look. It was very powerful and resonated all over the place. Kenya said to be near $800 million loan with Citibank and Standard Chartered, Standard Bankers and Rand Merchant Bank. Government also secured $500 million from lenders led by the Trade and Development Bank and East African Trade Finance Bank based in Burundi. Ten-year loan is in addition to the $250 million it raised from the same lenders last month. This was interesting. The nation faces debt repayments of about $8 billion this year, including interest, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Kenya hasn't ruled out a Eurobond sale, may borrow as much as $2.4 billion externally in the fiscal year that begins on July the 1st. Spokesman for both Citigroup and Standard Bank referred questions to the Kenyan Treasury. 
Kenya plans to raise 154 billion shillings through external borrowing in the current budget year that ends June 30 to finance a deficit estimated by the Treasury of 9.6% of GDP. I burned a farm in Africa. Land invasions in Kenya portend election violence, says The Economist. At Kifuku, a cattle ranch in Kenya, the dry stone walls are reminiscent of England by the farmhouse a pair of boots sit on an artificial lake. The farm has, however, been anything but calm of late. Since September, dozens of cattle ranchers, some with assault rifles, have driven their cattle onto the farm's 8,000 acres of grass. Buildings have been wrecked, staff beaten up, and a police officer shot and injured. We're all extremely tired and frustrated and short-fused and scared, said Maria Dodds, the owner. By February the 12th, relief had arrived in the form of an armoured car filled with policemen. The invasion of Kifuku Farm is one of a series that have taken place since 2013 across Laikipia County, a fertile plateau between Kenya's central highlands and the arid north. Much of it is covered by private ranches and nature conservancies owned by white Kenyans such as Mrs. Dodds and international investors. The attacks appear to have escalated in recent weeks. A tourist lodge was burnt down on the Suyan Ranch on January 29th. Visitors had to be evacuated from the Mugi Conservancy early in the month after a staff member was shot dead. In all, 11 people may have been killed in such clashes, according to Reuters. The armed incursions have drawn comparisons to the expulsion of white farmers in Zimbabwe, but the conflict in Laikipia, which has the second highest density of wildlife in Kenya, is not black against white. And, you know, there are a lot of people who are farming up there who are small-scale farmers. Uh, national politicians from the Deputy President to the Interior Secretary have said private land should be respected and the violence must stop. President of Uru Kenyatta repeated the warning on a voter registration drive in the region in January, but many of those affected in Laikipia suspect the government of ignoring the invasion as to avoid jeopardizing the vote. The farm will recover when the herders leave for new pastures, says her husband Anthony Dodds, but he worries about the hundreds of smallholders of Kifuku's southern borders. They are really on their knees. He wrote about this on the 6th of February 2017 in a piece connecting the dots, food prices, the weather, and Laikipia. But a, a positive development is Shilling's 214 million livestock insurance. Has been, there's been a payout for drought hit pastoralists. This was a scheme that the government entered into. Uh, details of which are on rich wrap ups if you're interested. Kenya, Nairobi at daybreak with Mount Kenya on the right and the Abadair Mountains rising in the far distance. Credit Nigel Pavitt of Getty. Shilling is stable at 103.55 as it's been for a while. Nairobi all share up 2.8% in February but minus 6.5% so far this year. NSE 20 up 5.416% at minus 7.56% in 2017. I like this photograph, flamboyant sunset at Mida Creek, Watamu, and this one as well, City Scape at Night. This is a photograph by Tom Cochran of Getty. Equity is to roll out agency banking in Zanzibar expansion, where it commenced operations last week with its first branch on the island. It's now operating 14 branches in Tanzania, where it shut up set up shop in 2012. Equity Group share price data is there as well. It's down 10% so far this year. Sassini T is one of the few shares that's positive for the year. It's up 3.38% year to date. Safaricom has softened of late, uh, fell to 18, a four week low yesterday. Uh, bounced hard from these levels a month ago, and I expect a rebound imminently. The news around KBA's real-time interbank switch, which KBA says will create an interbank mechanism to en enable interoperability across KBA members for all retail payment streams, introduced some sell-side pressure on Safaricom because of its perceived threat to Mpesa. But I think that pressure will start to ebb now. Kenya always was up. 
8.08%, to close at a one-month high of 5.35 yesterday. Uh, it is widely expected that the full-year earnings season will kick off as early as this week. The banking component of the NSE has buckled since the Interest Rate Act, and the second sell-off ensued earlier this year. But in some cases, shares look egregiously oversold. KCBs, which eased 2.04%, uh, at a close at a two-week low, trades on a trading P of 3.94, and is one of those shares which is completely oversold. INM, which announced the closing of its Jaguar Bank takeover, retreated 3.77%. That's down 15% year-to-date. Standard chart of the only banking share up uh, year-to-date. Um, uh, out of all of them. Unger, which announced uh, it was rationalizing Ents Valley uh, Bakery's subsidiary, uh, is minus 8.69 in 2017. Once again, I'm deeply grateful that you stopped by and listened to my mandarins. Thank you.